What's up guys? Today I want to talk to you about adding more punch to your drums so they cut through your mix and your tracks really stand up when compared to other professionally mixed and mastered tracks. And this is an interesting topic because the techniques that are used vary wildly depending on genre. Because what's considered to be a punchy drum in say a rock track or a folk track or something acoustic is totally at a different level as what's considered to be a punchy drum in a dubstep or trap or hip hop track. So the engineering and the techniques and sometimes even the plugins are really different. And I'm an engineer that works exclusively in the field of electronic music. And so I want to teach you guys a collection of techniques that I've found to be really useful and really effective in electronic music. So I'm going to show you guys the exact plugins, the workflows, the techniques that I use. And the goal is to be able to have you guys able to produce drums at a similar level of quality as you'd hear in a professional sample pack. Awesome. So without further ado, grab yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee, glass of whiskey, if that's what floats your boat. And let's do this. I've got a project spun up here that we can use as an example today. When I'm working on drums like this and doing sound design or mixing, I always like to listen to the drums in context. That'll help you to get better results. So let's have a quick listen to the tune. We can hear the song's got a pretty punchy kick that we're gonna try and emulate using our techniques today. So I have a group that I've created down below here and I've taken the kick from the actual song and rendered it to audio so we can both see it and hear it in isolation. And then we're gonna render our own starting kick waveform that's nowhere near as punchy using a drum synthesizer that I really like. It's a Max for Live instrument and it's by Isotonic Studios, it's called Ultra Kick. And I like it for a couple reasons I'll show you real quick. One is that you can dial in the tuning very quickly just by using this parameter right here. So I know my song's in G and I want the kick to be at the root note of the song. So there we go. The other thing is you can dial in an exact length in milliseconds. And that's useful, especially when you're trying to recreate a similar sounding drum to a reference. If you take a look at live and you highlight a particular area in arrangement view, in the bottom left corner of Live's interface, it shows you the length of that selection. And if you wanna get even more tight with it, you can hold down the uh, command key on OS X and it allows you to be even more surgical. So you can dial in a very specific length of time there and Live will show you how long it is. So in this case, this drum's about 150 milliseconds. And so I dialed that in exactly in Ultra Kick. And that's all I'm doing here. I'm rendering it out and we have an audio version of the exact same thing. So here is what it looks like. We can see the waveform of the kick looks roughly similar to the reference drum, save for the very punchy transient. The first technique that I want to show you is actually pretty simple. It's layering in a hi-hat and then playing around with that hi-hat sample to get some punch. Really, the perception of punch in a drum comes from harmonics. It comes from higher frequencies than the fundamental of the drum. So if we can play around with the extra frequencies that are added to the drum by layering in a sample, that can give us more punch. So let's see how that sounds. I've got a simple closed hi-hat imported. This is what it sounds like. And one thing I want to point out that happens in live that you really have to be aware of when dropping audio samples in that are drums is of the automatic clip fade that is applied at the beginning of the drum. If we really zoom in here and we take a look at this, you can see that there's actually been a very mild fade. You don't notice it if you're zoomed out, but when you're zoomed in, you notice it and it makes a huge difference in the transient impact of any drums that you drag in with audio. This is a preference that you can set in Live's Warp Record and Launch area of preferences, you can take these create automatic fades on the clip edges and turn that off. It's on for a good reason, which is when you're slicing up loops, you won't get clicks and pops. So I usually like to leave it on, but I will just remove the fade manually when I add a drum in. So a lot of people that are dropping audio drums into Live might not be getting the biggest transient impact and punch simply because there's an automatic fade being applied. So we're gonna take that off and we're gonna mix the hi-hat in so that it's definitely well underneath the level of the kick. And then we wanna take the hi-hat and just really shorten it up. 
If we take a look at the reference drum, and again, this is why it's super useful to have a reference drum in audio so you can actually look at it. We take a look at the actual length of the transient. If we highlight just the transient in the reference drum, we can see that that's about seven or eight milliseconds, right? Not very long. So we want to tighten up the hi-hat part so that it is roughly the same length. And then I also find it's quite useful to be able to pitch shift the sample using Live's transposition engine. Like that. Or my preferred method is to actually use a frequency shifter. So if we had a frequency shifter after, you can just use this parameter right here, and you can really dial in what sounds like the right click at the front of your kick. Then as a final step, we're going to create a little fade in on the actual kick drum body sample to take it out of the equation when the hi-hat's in there. So really we're just hearing that punchy, clicky part at the beginning of the drum that's gonna take the space of what the kick beater would normally take up. And once we've got that dialed into taste, we're simply gonna render the drum out to audio and save that to compare against other examples. Next up, I wanna show you guys how you can achieve a really punchy drum by isolating the transient. The transient of the drum is where the punch comes from. And if we can separate that out from the body of the drum and apply a special chain of processing to it, then we can get insanely punchy drums. So let's take a peek. We've got a different starting sample as our source in this example. And you can see it is a fair bit longer than the reference drum. So I'm gonna start by just tightening it up and getting it to be roughly the same length. That already is gonna get the drum to sound quite a bit more punchy than it was to start with. Now I'm going to duplicate the track and I'm going to leave this as the original in case we wanna come back to it. And I'm gonna split off the transient using the split clip function. So I wanna take uh, about the same length as the transient here, but with a bit of overlap. So I'm gonna go off of the snap to grid and I'm just gonna highlight that and split off the transient. So we can rename this one transient and then we'll duplicate that and call that body and we'll delete the corresponding parts. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is to create a little bit of overlap between the samples. And we can use our fades. Beautiful. And if we solo both of these guys, they should sound pretty transparent with the original source sound. Excellent. Now we can use the Ableton Overdrive plugin on the transient to be able to add a whole bunch of harmonics to it. So I really like this device specifically because it actually gives us control over dynamics like a compressor. And then we also have the ability to control wet dry if we want to tone drive, I usually max out, and then we can reposition the bandpass filter. I usually will put a utility after this as well so I can mono the transient, which is quite a good step to do. So I just grab one side of the stereo spectrum and then we also have uh, an output gain control now where we can mix in the transient with the body of the drum. When you're using this split transient method, it's quite important to be able to get the length of each layer and the fades right. So it oftentimes requires some experimentation to get this dialed. I'll also say that you can feel free to mix and match methods. Oftentimes, once I've gotten the transient dialed in with the overdrive, I'll apply a frequency shifter afterwards to take a bit of the top end edge off it that the overdrive gives. Once you've got the drum dialed in to your satisfaction, then it's time to bounce it out and make an audio render of it. No discussion about punchy drums would be complete without talking about transient shapers. And with Live 10, we now have the Drum Bus device, which has transient shaping capabilities built right in. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm using it to be able to get massively fat and punchy drums. To demo Drum Bus, we're gonna go back to our original Ultra Kick waveform. Let's go ahead and grab Drum Bus. 
I have it linked up in my collections here under drum processing, so it's easy to get. I use it really frequently, and it actually just changes the sound of the drum quite substantially by dropping it on. I'm not interested in its sound shaping capabilities here as much as the transient shaping. So we have this parameter down here, and when we turn the parameter up, it actually increases the transient and the body of the drum. And when we turn it to the left, it emphasizes the transient and de-emphasizes the body of the drum. So you get a tighter, punchier drum. So depending on the character of drum that you want, you can play around with these settings. So I kind of like the thuddy sound of that kick when we turn the transient up but the body of it down. So let's go ahead and render this out to audio. In the next technique, I'm gonna show you how to build your own transient shaper using only some basic building blocks like a compressor, an audio effect rack, and a saturator. So you don't even have to have a transient shaper, you can build one by using Ableton's modular tools. Let's check it out. We're gonna start with the same drum that we used in the split transient method. We'll take a compressor, and we're gonna use the compressor with some pretty extreme settings to be able to isolate the transient of the drum. So ensure makeup gain is off, it's in peak mode, we don't need any knee. We can turn the ratio all the way up to infinity to one, drop the threshold all the way to negative infinity. And now this allows us to control the length of the transient by using the attack parameter of the compressor. So we just get that click. Now we take the compressor and we rack it into an audio effect rack. And we can just rename this transient. Now we can create another chain and this is going to be for the full range signal. And now we're going to take the transient chain and duplicate it. And this is because we're going to use this to phase cancel the transient portion out of the full range signal to create the body of the drum less the transient. So we're going to multi-select these two chains. We're going to group those together into a nested rack. And we're going to call this body. Then we're going to take the transient and we're going to add a utility device behind it and we're gonna invert the polarity of both channels. So this will take the signal that's coming in from the transient and effectively silence it out of the full range signal. And if we listen to this, this should be the body of the drum without the clicky front part. Awesome, and if we sum those together, we should get a fairly transparent copy of the drum. Awesome. So now we're free to apply some effects to the transient or even just adjust the gain of the transient relative to the body, which is more or less what a transient shaper is doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly macro up some key parameters to the macros on the front panel of the audio effect rack. So what we've got after all the mappings have been done is we have a transient length parameter which is mapped out to the attack phase of the compressor and it controls the length of the transient. We also have amplitude controls for the different chains for the transient and the body, like a traditional transient shaper. And then after that, I've added in a couple of the effects we've seen from previous examples, the overdrive and the frequency shifter, just to be able to really dial in the transient independently of just manipulating the volume. So let's give it a shot and see how it sounds. So just like with the other techniques, it requires some finesse and some experimentation to find the sweet spot with the mix of parameters. But what I really like about this technique is similar to a traditional transient shaper, you can put this on a drum track where the drums are already recorded, as opposed to a lot of the other techniques where you're needing to do it at a sound design level. You can take a laid down drum track and just slap this audio effect track right on and give you transient control. So now we can check out how all these different techniques stack up in the context of the song. So I've taken all the different audio renders and I've dropped them into the drum rack that's playing the main kick drum in the song. And I've got the original kick unmuted here and I'm just gonna flick through the rest of them so you can hear each one of them in the context of the track.
Sweet guys, so I just wanna wrap up with a few closing thoughts here. First is that not every song needs super punchy drums. So you really need to listen to the song and what it's calling for and make a judgment call there because some songs don't benefit from having these crazy engineered punchy drums. Some genres like hip hop, for example, have really thuddy kicks and they're actually not very punchy. Other genres like neuro hop or drum and bass might have a really top endy bass that's layered with the kick drum and you don't need all that punch coming from the drum. So really just assess the song and, and feel out what the song needs and don't just apply these techniques blindly. I also wanna say that these are not the only techniques. These are just a collection of my favorite techniques and ones that I've found effective. This is not an exhaustive list, so you may find plugins and techniques and processes that work really well. And if you do, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Okay, I also wanna speak to something that comes up a lot, which is, these techniques take time. They take developing a really good ear. And maybe you just couldn't be fussed with being that precious about the time it takes to apply these techniques and get them really finessed and get them really right. So, you know, writing music is what matters at the end of the day. And if you're finding these techniques are getting in your way, don't be afraid to just drop in a mastered sample pack kick. If that keeps you in the creative flow and just gets you producing and writing music, then that's a win at the end of the day. Awesome guys, thanks so much for uh, tuning in and hanging out with me today. I hope you're feeling super inspired and that these techniques are amping you up to go and apply these in the studio. Happy music making to you all and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Cheers.